Uh, we have a guy, Charles, Charlie Brady here, who's brilliant. He's in charge of all things numbers. He's, just to call him a top editor is, is insulting him. He is like, uh, I, I don't know, Oz, the Wizard of Oz. And he had an interesting statistic he just passed along to us, that the Dow has never finished positive after a 500-point intraday drop. Never. So, and we've had a lot of those, right? But, but from that point, in that day, and at the end of that day, it has never been positive after that happened. So we had a 500-plus point fall off earlier in the day. So if that holds true, it, we will never be positive. Then again, if his record is as spotty as I suspect it might be, we will soar by the close. But isn't that interesting? Anyway, trading more fears are escalating, though. Mitch McConnell is calling the president's tariffs a potential slippery slope. So how will this impact the midterms, these elections? The GOP donor, Dan Everhart. Uh, Dan, very good to have you. Are you worried when you see all of this stuff, things are going your way, the tax cuts and everything else? More people like him, the president's own approval ratings moving up a little bit. And then this. What do you think? Sure. Well, I, I think we've. I think the Republican Party has definitely got a lot of momentum with the tax cuts, with Trump's State of the Union speech, with the economic growth and the low, un, historically low unemployment numbers. I think we're in a good spot. I am worried that this uh, tariff, and I think we're on the cusp of a trade war, uh, could potentially put a wet blanket on this whole thing and negatively impact the Republicans and, and America moving forward. So, Dan, when you hear administration folks, uh, mm -hmm. Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, or Larry Kudlow down at the National Economic Council say, fear not, uh, this isn't going to be a problem. And I'm paraphrasing here, but they're, they're saying, don't worry about it. W what do you say? Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, my, my standpoint out there in the, the middle of America is a bit different. I'll, I'll tell you, when they proposed the steel and aluminum tariffs, the cost my company paid for metal went up, you know, overnight or over three business days. So it didn't really wait for the tariffs to be enacted. I also By the way, think, that's you know, a very good point you just mentioned there, Dana, that it, pricing doesn't wait for tariffs to come into effect. The markets decide that rather quickly, and, and, and it's very real. But go ahead. I'm yeah, and sorry. so that, that negatively impacted us within three business days, wow. not, not over a course of time. So, but I also think if you look more broadly, I think that, you know, really, uh, who, who wins a tariff war? You know, I think it's the players that aren't on the field. Brazil, Vietnam, Germany might be the beneficiaries of the U.S. and China having a trade war. That's interesting. Now, um, the administration contends that uh, the Chinese will come to their senses, come to the table, make some concessions. They might. Uh, apparently, the president is eager to trim that $375 billion trade gap with the Chinese by at least $100 billion. Reports the Chinese might be open to buying more semiconductor computer chips, that sort of thing, maybe more agricultural products. What do you think of that? Do you think it, if it were to go and end that way, then all these other run-up that we've seen in, in, in a host of agricultural goods and, and metal and related items, they, they just roll back? Because that doesn't always happen. Well, yeah, so, I, you know, look, I think the president is right. I think that China is absolutely playing fast and loose with our IP, and I think that he's, he's bold and courageous to stand up to the Chinese, and I think that's why people elected him. You know, I'm worried about the tactics. I feel like it's the consumers that ultimately lose in a trade war. And I think that a trade war is, you know, it's, it's like a relationship or a lawsuit or, or a baseball game. You know, we're only in control. The Trump administration is only in control of, of, of half of it. So we don't know what the Chinese are going to do. We don't know their internal politics. We don't know if they're going to be able to stand down or they've got to have a stiff upper lip and keep, keep playing. And, and so I think that that's very concerning as a consumer and as an investor. I also think that the, the media keeps talking about the markets, and I think that's important, but the other half of this to me is the supply chain, the capital investment, and all those underlying things that keep the economy moving forward and growing. And are those things going to take a pause to see while this, how this plays out, and then what's that going to look like in the in midterm elections? You know, I'll make the point that uh, you know, the, tariff, the Smoot-Hawley tariffs went on in 1930. In 1932, uh, Reed Smoot, Wallace Hawley, and Herbert Hoover all lost their elections. No, no, so you're I, right I, about that. And, and that, that also grew from just a handful of products that were going to be targeted to a laundry list that included pretty much every, uh, you know, every product and company under the sun. So it, it, that's what happens with these things. But let me get your sense finally about the midterm election effect. And, and you talk about tariffs that you and I pay, individual Americans pay, governments don't pay these things. Would they then, Americans feeling the pinch of that, if they were to come to pass, and, and you're correct to point out the administration is confident that it won't, uh, but 
that that would offset the gains that would normally have them in a good mood when they look at their paychecks, the tax return? P potentially, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of momentum on the Republican side with the tax cuts. I think it's, it's a clear and stark contrast that no Democrats voted for the tax cuts at the end of the year. Right. But I think that the, the administration needs to be extremely concerned about you know, putting a wet blanket on that and, and, and putting that, you know, momentum out with tariffs that are going to negatively impact the jobs and negatively impact the economic growth and negatively impact, you know, how much, you know, buying power a, a middle class family has in a, in a Walmart uh, online uh, or at, at any other various stores, I think, is of extreme concern to people's families. All right. Uh, Dan Everard, thank you very, very much. Thank you.